From now on, we will begin a press conference by Prime Minister Suga. First off, we'd like to uh, take a few remarks uh, from Prime Minister. The floor is yours, Prime Minister. Today, we had our COVID meeting of the government. And for 19 prefectures, said of emergency will be extended, such a decision was made. And as for the period, up until the 30th of this month, Miyagi Prefecture and Okayama Prefecture's state of emergency will be lifted. And as for priority measures, Miyagi, Okayama will be added, and the eight prefectures in total will be in the scope. And as for the duration, the 30th of September is going to be the end. Toyama, Yamanashi, Ehime, Kochi, Saga, and Nagasaki Prefecture, for those prefectures, as of 12th of September, uh, they will be lifted. At the same time, as for bars and uh, restaurants, shorter working hours and the telecommuting anti-infection measures will remain in place. Across the nation, in different places, new infections are now turning around or the having a decline. However, the number of severe cases are still at a high level. Yesterday, experts gave us uh, some suggestions or proposal, and as for the lifting of the state of emergency, uh, there was uh, some idea shown, and bed occupancy, 50% or below. And severe cases and uh, new infections and their people recuperating at home have to decline. And a vaccination will route. And effects have to be taken into account comprehensively. And given such conditions, a decision was exercised. And I myself, as a prime minister, after inauguration of this post, a one year has passed. And during this duration, I kept fighting against the virus of COVID. The lives and livelihoods of Japanese citizens have to be protected. With the de determination, uh, I kept working. And up until today, as for great contribution, healthcare professionals and nursing care professionals, for those people and for people of Japan, for every one of you, thank you so much for your cooperation. I really appreciate it. As for COVID-19, this is invisible enemy. So uh, through a dark tunnel, we tried to go through. It's almost equivalent to that. And ambulance, uh, when you hear as a sound, whether or not the necessary health care is provided, and for bars and restaurant establishments and the uh, uh, the travel industries, whether or not the uh, livelihoods are sustained, I, felt I was so concerned. And upon each occasion, I tried to listen to the field and the, the opinions of experts so that we can seek out the best possible opportunity for the people of Japan. Uh, we exhausted all the debates among um, all the cabinet members. As for the virus, it evolves again and again. And around the world, still, it is giving a rampage. As per the panel in Japan, many, many times, uh, there were many waves uh, which came. And during the course of one year, together with every, you, every one of you, uh, we fought together, and I learned a lot. And one of them, such learnings is, uh, based on the existence of the virus, we had a repeated waves of the infections, so we have to fend off uh, the infections. At the same time, economic activities have to be continued. One more point. Vaccination, it works. As a, around the world, 
uh, there was a fierce competition over the procurement. And in April, there was a US visit. I tried to procure for Japanese people. And after Golden Week, we were able to kick off the full fridge the vaccination in June per day, average 1.1 million doses. And in July, 1.5 million doses and 1.2 million doses for August, uh, more than expected. We were able to accelerate, and 140 million uh, doses were surpassed. As you, you can see in the panel, compared with what's going, in, going on in the West, uh, we were able to accelerate vaccination. And at the end of the month, 70% of the Japanese population will be able to get vaccinated at least once, and 60% of the population will get vaccinated twice, and so that uh, we will be able to have the same equivalent situation to what's going on around the world. And even with the uh, Delta variant and uh, new infections, the people who get vaccinated twice, um, compared with the uh, uh, non-vaccinated people, uh, the infectivity was uh, one out of 13, and 90% of the elderly people got vaccinated twice. So the severe cases and the death toll were extremely small. As you can see in the panel, compared with the previous wave of infection or the uh, expansion, we have a big changes. New infections, we have 2.9 times as much. However, severe cases, it's limited to 1.6 times as much. And there is a decline of 60% for the death toll. And because of the acceleration of the vaccination, the situation is now totally different. Strategic fight is something we are able to do today. With the spread of infection per 100,000 people, 100,000 uh, people of the infection and uh, death has been decreased by 8,000. Our target was 1 million doses per day. There was a criticism that it was not going to be realistic. However, our initiative to accelerate the vaccination was not wrong. This is what we believe. Novel coronavirus countermeasures is our top priority about the schedule for the politics for the autumn, every time I get the question, that is the answer I have given. We make utmost effort. And finally, the infection is on a decline. However, we haven't been able to put an end to an infection. LDP presidential election is starting. There are people who are still hospitalized and people who are worried at their homes. There are a number of people like that. Countermeasures against the COVID-19 and other duties as, you, as I do that. And it requires the energy to do the pres presidential election. Lifting a state of emergency on the September 12th is difficult. And as I made the determination, I thought I should concentrate on the countermeasures. That is why I decided not to run for the presidential election of LDP. As prime minister, what I have to do is to tide over the crisis so that uh, there will be the safe and lively livelihood to draw the path for that. That is what I have to do. The medical service system should be put in place. And with therapeutics and the vaccines, we prevent people developing the severe symptoms. In addition of the hotel and uh, accommodations, oxygen stations and uh, the so-called field hospitals will be established. Those uh, facilities will be uh, established. The doctors will make a decision about the hospitalization. We make sure people have access to the medical services. Neutralizing antibody has been used for more than 
20,000 people, and we have seen outstanding results. In Tokyo, after two weeks of the administration, there are 420 cases. Of them, 95% uh, efficacy has been observed. People with severe symptoms have to be declined further in order to make it happen. For every patient, they should be using the neutralizing antibody, and we are making a preparation in October to early timing of the November. People who wish to be vaccinated uh, should be vaccinated. For those regions that are under the state of emergency, the vaccine certificate and the certificate certificate for the, the, the negative result of the testing will be used and the restrictions will be relaxed uh, for the uh, dining and uh, the, the traveling. And for those activities, uh, we draw the pathway for those activities. Those people who are affected, the businesses and uh, employment and livelihood have to be protected we will be fully prepared to protect them. We have made a series of initiatives. We have seen the challenges regarding infectious diseases. Hospital beds and medical professionals have been difficult to secure. The drugs and the vaccinations, the clinical trial have been slow. We lag behind other countries. So sectionalism among the, the agencies and ministries, including the health ministry, and with the central government and local governments, there have been the challenges. We will solve those issues for the public. We want to achieve what is taken for granted. And with that determination, we have been tackling the the long-term challenges, carbon neutrality by 2050, and also establishment of the digital agency. Uh, with that, uh, we have made a good start for the driving force. And also, the reduction of mobile phone fees, it was implemented immediately, and, uh, and uh, 430 billion yen of the burden on the households has been decreased. Minimum wage should be the 1,000 yen nationwide. And the increase has been all time high, and we achieved 930 yen. As for the dropping birth rate, it is an imminent issue as well. As for inf infertility cost, so the whole entire uh, month's uh, worth uh, salary has gone. So we try to eliminate other such uh, a bottleneck and uh, the insurance coverage for infertility treatment, uh, we had a pathway. And now uh, the child rearing uh, leave for male uh, or men. And for the first time in several decades, we were able to achieve uh, 35 uh, people's or students' class. And there was also a minister in charge so that uh, we can tackle the administrative issues and NPO support was also enhanced. There were some unavoidable challenges that we tackle, I tackle as well, and alleviation of the youngsters, and so that the older generations will be assured a security system as a first step for that. The elderly uh, with uh, some liberal income uh, will uh, pay 20% uh, of the medical cost and the ops water, the safety should be ensured, and reputation damages have to be also fended off. And with that assumption, uh, we decided on the water release into the ocean and for constitutional amendment. And uh, on this front, we were able to achieve um, the passage of the Letterman law. And on the diplomatic and the security front, Alliance uh, between the U.S. and Japan uh, was further enhanced, and FYP, free and open in the Pacific, um, the scheme was broken down. And together with uh, other countries and uh, allies, we were able to deepen our collaboration. And the Tokyo Olympic and the 
Paralympics Games. On this front, for holding the Games in the summer this year, there are various opinions which were raised. However, as a host nation, we fulfilled our responsibility. We were able to uh, carry this out. And the athletes, fabulous performers, mesmerized a lot of people and delivered hopes and their dreams to the people of the world. And regardless of the disabilities, people help each other, such inclusive society achievement towards this goal, body or food, flee or mental body or flee, such a spirit uh, was delivered as well. In order to carry through everything, one year was too short, but kids, youngsters, and all the people around Japan have to be ensured their safe future in order to make it happen. I think we were able to give a clear pathway. As a prime minister, up until the very end of the duration or my tenure, I'd like to exhaust all my energy to do whatever I need to do. I'd like to once again ask for your understanding and cooperation. Now we are taking the questions from the floor. Uh, we ask Dr. Omi to go to the, the podium. Uh, some questions should be answered by Dr. Omi. When you are called, please go to the nearest microphone. Please state your affiliation and your name and ask your question. First, we are taking uh, questions from representative media, Mr. Yamazaki from Nihon TV. This is Yamazaki from Nihon TV. State of emergency is extended and there is no really improvement of the strain on the medical system, but you are stepping down. In hindsight, when you look at the countermeasures against the, the COVID-19, what were the challenges? What couldn't you achieve? What lessons you are learning? Please explain in a concrete way and based on uh, lessons and uh, insights. What are the challenges you want next admi administration to tackle? For the past one year, I made the utmost effort for countermeasures against the COVID-19. But then, the overall picture of the COVID-19 was not clear at all uh, with the uh, medical experts. And we have look at, looked at the uh, examples overseas. That's how uh, we implemented the countermeasures against the infectious disease. The medical service system was very difficult to secure. That is one big lesson we learn. Infectious disease law was amended. The central government and local governments for the providing uh, hospital beds, the request can be made. And if there are no uh, response, and uh, information can be disclosed uh, with the, uh, the governor and the uh, minister of the health ministry. Um, the initiative was taken, but uh, we didn't really necessarily have the uh, outcome. That is one thing uh, we can improve. At the same time, about the countermeasures against infection. Vaccine is the decisive factor in other countries, countries have been imposing the way stricter measures than Japan. The lockdown did not really prevent the infection from spreading. There was a wave. But at the end, what we saw is that the vaccine made a difference. As a government, we have been making utmost effort for vaccination and today and we have antibody cocktail this is the drug that can prevent severe symptoms as i said in tokyo and nationwide 
and this therapeutics have been used, and uh, we have seen a great effectiveness. So it is going to be important to use different solutions. There are the, the things we couldn't do. It was difficult to secure the hospital beds for the, the doctors and the nurses. It requires three times as much as uh, they usually do for other efforts. Uh, people are willing to participate in the vaccination. However, it was very difficult for people to join and participate in the countermeasures against the infectious disease. Uh, these are the areas that I want the next administration to work on, including the vaccine and therapeutics. So this is uh, what the uh, next administration should, uh, should continue to do. I believe Dr. Omi has some comments. So you asked the question about what we have observed and uh, expectation for the next administration. Uh, I think that this administration has implemented a number of measures. As Prime Minister said, we have Delta variant that is highly uh, contagious. We have seen a great progress for the vaccination, and we have new uh, antibody cocktail uh, therapeutics. I believe we are in a new phase for the next administration. Well, the current administration has built a basis and foundation, and there should be more uh, work. And there are three requests I want to make. First of all, because we see the progress of the vaccination, and it should be further progressed, particularly for the young people, but not only that, infections in the uh, regions uh, should be slightly declining. This is what we can expect. And this is what we know from our experience. There are certain locations or spots where the infection stays. So with the vaccination for the, uh, the young people, uh, we have to uh, prevent resurgence of the infection. So we have to focus on these spots or locations. And also, this vaccine is great vaccine, but that's over time and the, the immunity uh, will wane about the booster dose, and that should be considered. And also, we have to prevent the strain on the medical systems. This is the biggest challenge. People, uh, elderly people and the people with the underlying, underlying conditions, there should be the uh, early treatments. We did not have a treatment for the people with uh, uh, the, the symptoms. There was no incentives. We have an antibody cocktail, which is very effective for the people with the mild symptoms. So early testing and early treatment has to be achieved. And system to allow that should be established. And last but not least, vaccination and testing. So this is the vaccination and testing package that show the vaccination record and uh, negative result of the testing. Many people are showing uh, interest for this package. So this so-called vaccination and testing package, there should be the, the discussion going on among the public. These are the requests from me. Thank you. Now we'd like to move on to Kuromi-san's question from Yomiuri newspaper. Uh, this is Kuromi with Yomiuri newspaper. First of all, as for the background for um, why you are not running for the presidential election for the LDP, so uh, there was an expression of not to fire candidacy for this area, and when did you actually make up your mind. And before that expression, 
the dissolution of the diet or the lower house, uh, there was such a speculation. What was your take on that at the time? And for the LDP presidential election, uh, Mr. Kishida, uh, the former Secretary General, uh, the policy chief, and uh, Mr. Amit Takaichi uh, expressing their intention to run, and uh, Mr. Kono as well. And who do you support? And uh, if you cannot name anybody, then what kind of policies or st stance would be favorable? As for the race, so there is a mention about the uh, not fighting for can, uh, not fighting candidates, they say, for the LDP election uh, in their board meeting. So that timing, I decided on this matter. And regarding the dissolution of the diet, there was also a mention. And of course, regarding the dissolution, and of course, because there is always the expiry of the duration of prime minister, so I try to go through many different simulations in the early day. But of course, I have to look at various situations. And on, as for the lifting of set of emergency and the priority measures on 12th of September, all the time I was uh, thinking about it. So I thought that it would be difficult to lift the measures and including that point and the COVID measures and of course official duties have to be managed at the same time. And while doing this, running for the election will require a tremendous amount of energy. So with that in mind, such an overall picture, I decided not to uh, fire or run for the next election. And this wasn't officially announced yet, and all the candidates are still not listed because 17th uh, is a deadline for filing. So therefore, with that in mind, of course, a decision has to be exercised. Now we take questions from other press. Uh, please raise your hand if you want to ask a question. When you are called, please go to the nearest microphone. Akita Sakikake Nippo, Kato san, please. Uh, this is Kato from Akita Sakikake Shinpo. So, you became Prime Minister uh, last year, and you have been saying that you are from Akita, the local area. The regional revitalization has been one important measure. And you talked about uh, day and night, uh, you have been concentrating on the fight against the COVID-19. However, for the policy for the local areas, you, are, you haven't really completed it. For the, the policy for the regional vitalization, what is your assessment and do you have any expectation for the next administration? I was born and raised in Akita, and I am proud of that, and I became the diet member we need the local area to be revitalized. Otherwise, Japan will not be revitalized. The revitalization of the local area has been one area I have been focusing on. So the, the contribution, the tax for the local areas have been one the big initiative. There was the 15 million yen and that is required to educate and raise children. And when the person goes to Tokyo and the person pays tax to Tokyo, it, it does not really make sense. So when I was a minister for internal affairs and communications, I made a proposal for the, the contribution, tax contribution, donation for the, the local area. And uh, we have 65 million to 66 million. And uh, we have uh, the inbound travelers and uh, exports of the, the agricultural products are very important. The land price of the local areas has increased the first time in 27 years, uh, two years ago. But for the inbound travelers, 
When it comes to export of the agricultural products, last year, even though we had a pandemic, and the, it made an all-time high, and this year it increased by 30%. So this is what we would like to continue to do about Akita uh, offshore wind power generation and carbon neutrality was announced by myself. And offshore wind power generation and re renewable energy, uh, Akita has a high expectation. So the, and it is the, um, regarded as the uh, focus area for uh, wind power generation uh, offshore. So we have a high expectation in the future. At any rate, revitalizing the local areas will lead to uh, the powerful nation, and that is the determination that I had. Hi. Okay, now we'd like to move on to the next one. TBS, Godo-san. My name is Godo, with TBS. I have a question for Prime Minister. As you mentioned in the beginning, and you reflected upon what you did over the last one year, and especially in the beginning, there was a focus on go to travel matters or campaign. And I think it's going to be handed over to the next administration. And today, there was a mention about the restrictions uh, easing, and under which, what kind of circumstances do you think you can restart go to travel campaign first according to the policies decided today so we have to look at the vaccination pace and the people who got tested for those people the self restraint of travel is going to be lifted and given the current infection status, uh, the tourist industry can be somehow uh, boosted. So there was such a report. So of course, go to travel campaign is going to be one of the agenda items. The people in this industry, we have 9 million people, whether it's hotels or uh, souvenirs and uh, accommodation, Japanese inns, and so many people related are underpinning the local, regional society and economy. So therefore, given such a situation, we have to see the vaccination worldwide status. And at the end of the month, this month, 70% uh, people get vaccinated uh, one time and 60% twice. And after 50% of the vaccination rate, uh, many uh, establishments are open in the overseas markets. So we have to see how it plays out. And then depending on that, uh, we can think about the go to travel campaign as one of the options. And of course, there are also things which are happening only within the prefecture. So given this, uh, there are some options available. Straight Times. Uh, Shim from Straight Times. Straight Times from Singapore. I'm Walt. A uh, question to Prime Minister. In the early time, if you had uh, implemented more rigorous countermeasures, there would have been are more effective measures, then you would not have to, you would not have had to uh, uh, repeat the state of emergency, and you didn't have to really change the administration. There are some opinions like that. In hindsight, if you could have done things differently, what would you have done? So. How are you going to uh, make sure people follow the exit strategies? About state of emergency, as much as possible, 
we wanted to minimize the impact on the people's livelihood. So the focused approach is very important. And we have listened to the opinion from the experts. When infection was spreading, dining and drinking were the area that we focused. So this was the different approach that we have taken, different from other countries. In Japan, it is very difficult to impose the lockdown. It is difficult to ban uh, people from going out. So the state of emergency and uh, implementing priority measures and eventually lifting them, we have to really do that, uh, striking a balance. Now we have vaccines, and vaccine is the decisive factor and we have made the um, utmost effort for the vaccination. I did not really get your last question. Could you repeat your last question? Okay, let me repeat. So you explained the exit strategy. How are you going to secure, how, you, how are you going to make sure new prime minister will follow the exit strategy that you have explained today? That uh, when we have the, um, the president, new president of the LDP, and the person will become the new prime minister. So we have been formulating the, the mechanism. Uh, we would like to make a good communication. That is what we want to do. NHK Osanai-san, please go ahead. My name is Osanai with NHK. I'd like to ask about the LD presidential election. So the, you decided not to file candidacy, and because of this, uh, Mr. Connor, who is part of your administration, uh, decided to run for the election. How do you see this? As a matter of fact, when I was serving as a chief cabinet secretary, I ran for the election uh, for the previous election. And afterwards, uh, there was a press conference. So as a cabinet member, of course, responsibly, uh, each responsibility has to be fulfilled, as a matter of course. And whether or not you will run for the presidential election, uh, regardless of your position or whether you are a cabinet member or not, as a politician, you have to exercise your decision and you have to have a debate thoroughly. And of course, uh, different people while in candidacy, expressing their own ideas. I think it's a good thing to do. Hi. Shigeta-san uh, from Nikkei newspaper. This is Shigeta from Nikkei. Let me ask about the, uh, the organization for the COVID-19 measures. You mentioned sectionalism in the health ministry, and you mentioned the significance to to reform. So the Japan, Jap, uh, Japan, Japanese CDC like organization should be established. That was the, the request. So when you look at the administrative organization for the COVID-19 countermeasures, what were the challenges and what would be ideal organization? When it comes to countermeasures against the infectious disease, there are many bureaus within health ministry. The bureau for the vaccine development and the medical service fees and requests for the medical uh, facilities and medical equipments and uh, medical goods procurement. There are many bureaus and in order to overcome the sectionalism. There are the response headquarters that really cuts across the organizations. For instance, about vaccination, not the health ministry, not only the health ministry, but also the Ministry of Internal Affairs have been involved 
and METI and the Ministry of the Infrastructure. So those relevant ministries have been engaged to tackle and address the vaccination. This is the significant. So we have to make a whole of government effort. So we made sure we have the certain organization put in place. And also relation between central government and local governments. And there are certain uh, barriers between central and local governments. And also the public health centers, how we think about it. And we have seen a number of challenges from health ministry. It is difficult to make a direct instructions to the, the public health centers. And it is also difficult to do that for Tokyo. There are 23 wars in Tokyo, and there are certain jurisdictions for the public health centers. For the, the organization for the, the public sector, when we are tackling COVID-19, so we wanted to have um, the, the single uh, line of the, the, the instructions. That is what we need when we tackle the COVID-19. Dr. Omi has some comments about uh, public, public service in Japan, uh, day and night, and to very late at night, people are working so hard. I would like to express my respect. But in order to make improvements going forward, I am one of the experts, and I would like to talk about this. For instance, about vaccination, Prime Minister has been demonstrating the leadership, and we have seen a great progress. However, there have been the challenges and epidemiological information sharing among local governments and central government, and that is the most important part for the, the, the measures and enhancement of the capacity of testing and public health centers. I believe that I think um, the government has been aware of these challenges. So one improvement that can be made, if I may, is that so the government was aware of the challenge. However, it was not clear who has the responsibility to tackle that. So sharing uh, epidemiological information in order to solve the, uh, the issue, it's not only about the medical uh, issue. So the, what we think about uh, central and local governments and who has responsibility and also uh, personal information. So it is very difficult to have, it is difficult to solve it. We have to have a broad perspective in Japan, when we have a specific uh, research topic, research area, there are budget, and over time, uh, analysis is conducted, and we are good at it. However, when we are facing a crisis, and where we are facing the new challenges, in a short period of time, not only the medical area, we need um, the experts from the wide areas, and it was not sufficient. So what is going to be required is that, yes, we have to have a core experts within the government, but in a crisis mode. So we have a, we need to have a roster. It needs to be set in advance. We have a human resources in Japan. So in advance, uh, we appoint the people so that people can be prepared. When button is pushed, then immediately the roster of the experts can be convened and advice can be provided to the government or prime minister. That is kind of the system that Japan should have. So this is one thing we have learned through the experience. Thank you very much. So after the inauguration, within a short time frame, you tried to carry out the different kinds of transformation, which was really a great thing uh, for the future of Japan. However, following the Abe administration, in this administration, uh, the abduction issue 
addressing on this front uh, was a considered as a one of the greatest priorities. However, it remains unresolved. And if you are now resigning uh, from this post, how are we are going to tackle this front? And the next prime minister, as for uh, this abduction issue, whether or not it's going to be the first priority, there is such a question. Do you have any expectations for from the next administration on this front? As for the abduction issue of North Korea, uh, since the times that I uh, got uh, elected for the first time, Mang Yun Bon um, entry uh, ban uh, legislation. I was one of the founders for the registration when I was a prime minister, based on NHK, national broadcaster. As for the international affairs programs and TV broadcasting. Uh, there were some instructions given based on a law and so various opinions were raised regarding this area. However, I wanted to rectify uh, this problem and there were many painful feelings on the side of the family members and family members and uh, victims are getting older and older. So we cannot uh, miss a moment. So we have to uh, give a solution immediately. All the abducted people have to return as soon as possible. As a politician, I think it is a matter of course to exert all available energy. So even after I step down as uh, Prime Minister. As for this uh, abduction issue, I'd like to proactively engage in the solution. Yoshiura san from Kyodo. This is Yoshiura from Kyodo. Thank you. Let me ask about what you do for the next the lower house election. So you are stepping down as Prime Minister. But uh, for the election for the House of Representatives from the uh, Kanagawa, uh, the, are you going to run for the election from the Section 2? Yes, I have the plan to do so. Nippon Hoso, Hatanaka san, please. My name is Hatanaka. As for COVID-19 and preparation for the presidential election, it would require a lot of energy, you said. However, I think uh, you were pressurized uh, by the people who tried to somehow let you step down. However, what do you exactly mean by a tremendous amount of energy? This is what I've story, however, for example, right after the inauguration, you were able to probably ask the opinions of the people or the mandate. And without looking at the media simulations, I think there were many opportunities for the dissolution. However, so do you have any chagrin or any uh, feelings of regret? Please return to your seat. I mentioned a tremendous amount of energy because it requires a tremendous amount of energy. As an incumbent prime minister, I'm, uh, I'm the head of the handling this COVID-19 matter. So when I'm asked this question all the time, I say that uh, COVID-19 has to be the first priority. With a responsibility, this matter has to be resolved with a strong determination. At the same time, If I run for the presidential election, then when I consider population and all that, I have daily duties, official duties, and I have no factions that I belong to. So therefore, in this regard, I have to take actions on my own. At the same time, 12th of September is going to be, so without the lifting the state of emergency on this date, I 
was always thinking about the, this matter. So therefore, uh, with that in mind, I made a decision. And about the dissolution, when I uh, was elected uh, as a president, my support rate was high. However, anyway, I wanted to fulfill my responsibilities, duties. So that was the whole purpose of raising my hand for the LDP president or prime minister. At that time, what I have said is, of course, there was a lot of pressure around the COVID measures. So the person who is going through this, the measures, In the meantime, there were many duties that I should have fulfilled and I should fulfill in order to achieve um, what I have said. I have become a prime minister, therefore, I have uh, decided uh, this way. Sugimoto san from Sankei. This is Sugimoto from Sankei. So I would like to ask a question about what you have felt for the past one year. You said that there have been inevitable challenges, but uh, you were willing to tackle them. The typical Fukushima Daiichi power plant treated water, releasing the water to the sea and, and uh, increasing the medical cost for people who are 75 years old or older, and SCJs, uh, people's appointment under the COVID, um, the, your measures have not been uh, popular when you look at the public poll. So you knew that there were going to be the election. So the political decisions could have been avoided so that you can avoid um, the lower approval rate. However, you have taken uh, measures that could uh, lower the approval rate. Why did you do that, and what was the determination behind it? First of all, I became prime minister, and since then, we would I would not defer the the necessary measures, and. I wanted to really make the foundation, as you mentioned, Alps treated water for the six years. And we have seen that direction already. And when we think about the city of Fukushima going forward, we needed to make a decision. However, uh, there was a multiple uh, occasions, the decisions have been deferred, and uh, the medical cost. So elderly people, the seventy percent of the uh, the burden, and burden for a working population is only increasing, and even though this may be a small amount, we wanted to ask elderly people to shoulder the burden so that we can continue our the social system. And to the Japan Medical Association, yes, within the party there was the opinions. We should not do that before the election. But uh, knowing who I am, I did not want to defer the decisions. And also, the SDF, the challenges about the uh, land. In the uh, diet, there have been the potential the discussion points. And at the same time, this is what we couldn't do, but uh, explaining to the public and have people understand what we do. I believe this is the uh, role of the uh, uh, politician. So we didn't want to defer the decision, and that has been the determination that I has that I have had. 
I'm so sorry to say this. However, we'd like to limit other number of questions now to two. Koyama-san, please. My niche newspaper, Koyama, about the background for not filing on your candidacy for the LDP president and So why did you uh, try to address uh, the leadership uh, uh, scheme at this point? So one of the bottlenecks uh, might have been uh, their personal affairs. Like I have said before, COVID uh, was the greatest um, or the first priority on the 12th. So that was always in my mind. So not being able to lift the state of emergency at the same time. I tried to go through, for example, dissolution and other kinds of simulations. However, with that in mind, and uh, the party leadership, uh, because the LDP, uh, it is really up to the discretion of the president. So therefore, the party leadership in this regard, if I can, then I wanted to get it down. An expansion of the COVID, whether or not I should abandon this, so in my mind, I was going through such thoughts. And under such circumstances, I decided not to fire my candidacy. Up to the very end of my term, I'd like to exhaust all my energy to address uh, this virus. Hi, uh, so Ariel Sang from Japan Forward, and you will be asking the last question of the press conference. Ariel from Japan Forward, thank you. In overseas, Japan's border control is drawing attention. And overseas, they are relaxing the measures. The self quarantine period may be changed from 14 days to 10 days, as some media reported for the opening of the economic activities and uh, quarantine measures at the border. How are you going to strike a balance? And the vaccination and PCR testing package will be introduced. When are you going to introduce that and how are you going to start it? When we see the, as we see the progress of the vaccination and the other initiatives, to start people to people exchange. Uh, K. Downland made the recommendations for reopening the economic activities. There are needs from business communities. The health and the lives of the public have to be protected. This is our top priority. And progress of the vaccination and situation in other countries and infection in home and abroad for the reopening of the social and economic activities, including the vaccination certificate, we will make a appropriate assessment and we will make a decision at the appropriate timing. And PCR testing and vaccination as one package, we will introduce that and and that can be used in many ways. It is. It is also true. As for the people who are raising their hands, uh, please send us one question later on. In writing later on, I will, will uh, send you answers. So this concludes today's press conference. Thank you very much for your support.